Okay. Um, yeah. Can I get a number five? Meal. Yeah, the meal. And instead of fries, can I get the onion rings? Girls gotta eat. Girls gotta eat. I'm on my way to go film this video, but I'm gonna stop and get something to eat right quick. Yeah. I'm at Freddy's. I normally would go to Culver's, but today I felt like Freddy's. We finna eat a burger. We finna eat a burger. We finna eat a burger. With pepper jack cheese. Pepper jack cheese. Look at my hair. Y'all, I'm trying to cover my edges. Because I look a hot mess up under here. Because... I haven't had my hair done in a while. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Got my soda. I haven't had my hair done in a while. And I'm going to get there. I am. Onion rings. Yum. Ooh, they're hot. Here is their pepper jack burger. That's all they're coming. Okay. Well, I'm about to eat my food, guys, and then I'll be back to talk to y'all. Mmm. Spicy. Mmm. Mmm. Very delicious. video you guys heard some disturbing things and <clears throat> I do want to address that um, before we get into this video mental illness is real I know because my brother has mental health issues as well and he has been in treatment for his condition. And even to this day, he still gets treatment for his condition. But I grew up with a brother that had mental, mental issues and um, my brother was violent as well. But with the proper help, he was able to get the help he needed to better himself. So on my last video, you guys heard some disturbing things when it comes to my stepson. And my stepson has issues. And what his diagnos diagnosis is, I don't know um, all the way. Because I don't think he's fully been evaluated. And what I want to say to address the mental health issues that my stepson deals with and how it affects the family and how it affects everybody around, um, I don't want to talk about that per se. What I want to really say is, listen, if you have a child, if you're a parent and you have a child that is suffering from whatever that child is suffering with, get that child help. Please get that child help. That child's suffering, the parents are suffering, the siblings are suffering, suffering. Everyone suffers. And in my case, I have literally been trying to convince my husband, my soon-to-be ex-husband, to get his son help, I would say for over eight years now. And to no avail, it has not yet happened. I've also suggested my, my husband get counseling because I see now that my husband is his son's enabler. Um, 
So to my husband, it's not a big deal. To me, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. His son's health is a big, mental health is a, is a big issue to the point where it has destroyed our marriage pretty much. And um, yeah, pretty much destroyed our marriage. So I'm just gonna say, if you're a parent and you have a child that has mental illness, mental illness, behavior, behavior issues, get your child help. Please don't let it continue to foster up into something that you can't control. And that's what happened in my case. I've done everything I could. There's nothing else I could do besides deal with it. And I don't wanna deal with it. With that being said, I don't wish harm on anyone. And I hope and pray that one day that his parents, uh, my stepson's mom and dad, would get that child help before he hurts himself or someone else. Okay? And I don't have resources and I'm not affiliated with any organizations or anything like that. But what I will say, if you're dealing with a child with issues like that, you can always start at that child's school. Start at that child's school. Talk to the counselors. I'm sure they may have resources and things like that that can help you. Talk to that child's doctor. You can start in those two places just to get that child some help. The best help that that child needs. It's, yeah. So I'm going to leave it at that. And... We're gonna go ahead and get into the video. Hey y'all, I am in my van, okay? I'm not moved into my van. I've been moving out the house. I got clothes still in here. It's just a hot mess in here. But, <laughs> been moving out the house. But before we get into this video, guys, this video is gonna seem so jumpy, okay? Because it is. It's jumpy because um the footage that you're about to see has been filmed over the last month and a half I would say so <laughs> I've been through a lot for the last two months and um there's been times where I picked up the camera just to film what's going on and there's days where I just didn't pick up the camera at all so it's going to seem jumpy. I'm going to try and put dates on the clips so that you know the time frame because I need to get you guys up to par, okay? <laughs> so, um, yeah. So right now, this is current day and time. Current day, okay? Current day and time. But now, let's go backwards to move forward. Let's do that. But this month has been an emotional roller coaster for me. And my emotions have been all over the place. I look a hot mess this morning. And I'm just not in a good mood. You know, they say, and I'm going to say that it's true, that your environment really affects your mood, your spirit. It really affects you. And at this point, I'm just like so over it. I'm so over it. Like, And sometimes, no matter how tough of a woman I think I am, sometimes I break down too. The month of October has been very rough. <laughs> okay. Um, I've came to the conclusion that we need to move forward with the divorce. And to my surprise, I thought that um, the state of Missouri had threw our first case out since we didn't respond within the time frame that they gave us. Um, but after contacting the state, they did not throw our case out and gave us an additional 20 days to submit um, the amended paperwork and the requested documents that they needed so we did all of that <laughs> so
So I do currently have a divorce case open. There has been days where I didn't want to do anything. I didn't, I didn't want to get out of bed. I didn't want to work. I didn't want to edit. I didn't want to record. I didn't want to film. I didn't want to eat, you know, because even though I'm initiating the divorce, it still hurts. It still hurts because I invested so much of myself into this relationship, into this marriage, and into this family. I was dealing with a lot of emotions and realizations. I found myself slowly sinking back into that sadness and that depression. I wasn't eating right. And all I wanted to do was sleep. I was not even taking care of myself. How do I move forward with my life? In order for me to do anything, get anywhere, you know, I need income. Simple. I need income and YouTube don't pay me enough income. So I have to go to work. <laughs> you guys are seeing me in the process of starting my life over. So I got to pull it together, pull it together, girl, pull it together. You got to get up. You got to get yourself together. I had to tell myself that I literally had to tell myself, get up, get yourself together, girl, get yourself together and start focusing on the present and your future because you can't change the past. The past is the past. What are you gonna do today for tomorrow? The first thing that I have to do, I gotta secure the bag. <laughs> I have to secure my future. I have to secure myself financially because nothing's going to happen unless I push forward through all these feelings that I'm feeling, the pain, the hurt, the disappointment, et cetera, et cetera. I have to push through them and get up, <laughs> get up out the bed and make things happen. I have to start thinking about my new life and what does it look like? <laughs> Where do I want to go? <laughs> what am I going to do? I, I don't have it all figured out. I don't. But I do know one thing. Whatever I do in life, you need money. So we got to go secure this bag. <laughs> I need money. I need financial stability in order for me to regain my independence completely. I applied for my old job back. Now, this is the job that I had before I went full-time van life. I worked there for two years. When I quit um, to do van life full time, I quit on excellent terms. So I said, I need a job. Why not go back to my old job? So I applied. Okay, so I had my first job interview and it went well. Hey y'all, today is my interview. I'm so excited. I'm ready. I prepped. I prepared. This is my interview outfit. I don't know if you can see it all. I got a skirt that goes past my knees because I like to be a professional. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so wish me luck, guys. And yeah, be positive, be affirmative, be professional. I got this done with my interview I think it went very well um, in fact one of the managers senior managers that interviewed me she already knows my work ethics um, so she's familiar with me she remembers me and all of that great jazz so we'll see what the next step is um, I don't want to sound overconfident that uh, they will hire me back, but I'm probably really confident that they will hire me back. 
the interview went well, so hopefully I should hear back from them sooner than later. Because we got this, girls. We got this. We, mm, no. <laughs> My hiring manager was out of town at the time, so they wanted the hiring manager to interview me himself. So they scheduled me for a second interview and guys, and this is just like, my anxiety level at this time was like just so high because you know, each day I'm waiting to find out, are you gonna hire me? Are you gonna hire me? Are you gonna hire me? Just was like eating away at me. So, <laughs> but I did end up having a second interview with the job and um, that went well. Then they made me wait a whole week, y'all. A whole week, do you know? I was just sitting here like, why don't they just tell me yay or nay? You know, like, why make me wait? Because I got so much writing on this. Now, I that was the only job I applied for. I didn't apply for any other jobs. A week later, after my second job interview, guys, oh, I'm, I feel so blessed saying this. I got the job. And not only did I get the job, I was blessed with a significant pay increase from when the last time I worked there, because since I worked there before and have the experience, they considered me as an intermediate hire. So. I am not complaining. I feel blessed. I am so happy about that. And my spirits just was like, yes, this is exactly what I needed to get my own apartment. Yes, you heard me. I am going to be getting my own apartment. And I actually have looked at, uh, I think, two apartments so far. And one of them I really liked. So, my husband now knows that um, I am going to be getting my own place. You know, we've already filed for divorce and he knows I'm going to be getting my own place. And my, my plan is to be in my own place January of 2024. That's my plan and that's my goal. You know, and I thought about, do I go back in my van? Do I buy an RV? Do I, do I, you know, at this point during this process in my life, I can't see myself doing van life. With my emotional, with my emotions and all the stresses and challenges that van life gives, I just don't need that right now on my plate. Plus with, with restarting my job. So I thought getting my own place, having a stationary place would definitely benefit me at this point in my life. Yeah. I have, I've been having some all right days. I've been having some sad days. I've been doing some crying you know, and all of that. Um, but I think all of these emotions are normal when you're going through a divorce, whether you're the initiator or not. It's normal. And I think, you know, these are just all the emotions that I have to deal with and I have to overcome them. I have to conquer them and let them do what they do. So some days I've been down in the dumps and then some days I have to like force myself to eat, force myself to, I've been doing ship. So I have to force myself to go work, force myself to go film, you know, force myself to get up and, and fix my face. <laughs> so it's an emotional roller coaster at this point in my life, but at the same time, I feel like I should be grateful and I should be thankful that, you know, 
the Most High is blessing me again with another blessing to get me where I need to be. Now, I thought that I could stay at the house until I get my own place. And that was my original intention, was to stay there for another two months. At, you know, it would have been two months. Um, but to stay there. And um, I decided that that's not going to work for me. Um, I didn't want to start my new job in the same situation because I'm ready for a new start. I'm ready to start over again. Um, as scary as it is, and it's scary, <laughs> but I can do it. I know I can. I did it before. You know, I raised my son on my own and I can do it again. But this time I don't have any kids, no pets, no, it's just me, girl, girl, okay? Okay, it's just me. I got this. But I thought I can stay and I decided that's not going to work. I want to emerge myself into positivity going forward. Yeah. So this is the final move. This is it. I left. And now I'm on my own. I'm solo, separated, <laughs> and um, on my own. But guys, I, I, I didn't want to live in my van at the moment. I didn't. Um, I thought about it and I felt it was best for me to be around my family, my friends, and to be around people that genuinely love me, that genuinely care about me, that makes me laugh. <laughs> and yeah, so I am staying with family and they are allowing me to stay at their house until I get my own place. And I feel so blessed about that. To have that peace of mind. There's no filming in their house, but <laughs> I can stay there. And I'm blessed to have shower, bed, uh, set up kitchen already. Um, I'm happy to have that. So yeah. By the time this video comes out, guys, I will be no longer living at that house. <laughs> okay? Yeah. The journey continues as I rebuild my life. Yes, I do what I do. And it's time for something new.
the chase. 